Some people actually have gotten pissed and offended because of my criticism of Pod Save America. And I just want to say, first of all, everybody in general needs to be a lot less touchy, touchy about their favorite talk shows. It's really okay. Nobody, it's competition. It's competition. Kicking in. Yeah, competition would start kicking in. And I don't even think that my criticism of Pod Save America has ever even been particularly harsh. I basically just said, like, done a very basic, look. Like, you know, we worked for Barack Obama. Like, one of the things that happened was, like, just a lot about, like, respecting the process. And, also, uh, give us your email so we can make sure you're voting. Yeah, give us your email because we'll make sure you're voting. Oh, my God. Like, sometimes I just wonder if, like, Sarah Huckabee Sanders ever even watched The West Wing. And, I mean, look, I'm sorry. That's what the show sounds like. And secondly, I mean, I don't know. I, look, I would go on Pod Save America. Sure. We just have fundamentally different ideology than they do. And this is a very practical way in which this fundamental difference in ideology shows up. If you listen to Pod Save America, which I haven't in like a year, I just listened enough to get the impression going. You will know that they are a very big fans of occasionally look to their credit. They will say Mitch McConnell scumbag evil got to be defeated. They will say Fox News pure propaganda. OK, so they're not completely delusional, but they are very much of the ilk of people who find it necessary to find people who have absolutely abhorrent and disgusting politics to co sign on the fact that Donald Trump is a monster. I don't need this in order to know that Donald Trump is a monster. And I also think it's quite evident through 2016 to 2018 that this sort of type of pundit does very little to move real dials. Now, maybe look, if you wanted to do a study on some of these like women suburban voters that seem to be moving more firmly, more firmly in the Democratic column, and somehow you prove to me that it's Steve Schmidt hits on MSNBC that is making this happen, <laughs> I will revise my opinion. But in lieu of that evidence, we mostly have a bunch of people who have disgusting careers, people who have been propagandists for war, who helped elect George Bush and Dick Cheney, who presided over a global torture regime, people who are, you know, mediocre hacks, who have pushed for actually over 90% of the policies that Donald Trump is putting in place. And they go out and they say, oh, you know, Donald Trump's a bad guy. They did this with the CIA guy who ran as an independent, I guess, against Trump, Evan McMullen. Evan McMullen, as Matt always points out, they asked Evan McMullen at the end of his hit on their show, what can we do to fight against this? This was in the December Keeping It 1600 episode before they transitioned. And Evan McMullen basically said we should uh, dissolve the federal government and give states power and cut regulations, if I recall correctly. So, which is, of course, entirely in line with the far right agenda that Donald Trump is presiding over. And they just got a little bit of heat now because apparently this guy, Tim Miller, who's their resident Trump is bad Republican, a former spokesperson for fucking Jeb Bush, great fucking guy. who is a great fucking guy, a massive cock, <laughs> but a great fucking guy. He was involved in the sleaziest aspects of the Facebook oppo research. He was at Definer Strategies. Definer Strategies was, according to the New York Times report, involved in... Uh, the campaigns to utilize anti-Semitic tropes, to target George Soros, to undermine citizen-backed groups criticizing Facebook for its violations of its users, for its lack of respect for privacy, for its being a conduit for fake news and the Cambridge Analytica data breach. Basically, and I'm quoting now from Ashley Feynman, who wrote a, good, uh, wrote a great write-up on this. Uh, she said, she and the name of the piece is called what did pod save America expect? Don't put professional Republican smear men on your liberal podcast. 
When the New York Times published a blockbuster report that, among other unseemly details, revealed that Facebook had hired an opposition research firm to push back against anti-Facebook groups, the campaign exploited anti-Semitism on the right, encouraging reporters to explore the financial connection between George Soros's family or philanthropies and groups that were members of Freedom from Facebook. The Republican operative was none other than Miller. This created an awkward situation for the boys of Crooked Media. When the story first dropped, Favreau disgustedly tweeted out the paragraph about the smears, seemingly without realizing it was his buddy who had propagated them. Several hours of silence later, the official Crooked Media account announced that Miller would not be contributing to Crooked while Favreau, Levitt, and Vitor got, quote unquote, got to the bottom of Tim's involvement in this work. Dude, is this true? Dude, look, it's almost like as if Tim lied to us about watching the West Wing. That is so not cool. Listen, Cheryl's cool, but like, dude, you got to chill. Like, you should like lean into like stuff, but you should lean out of like anti-Semitic propaganda. But like, let's be real here. And Anna Kasparian made this point earlier. There is not... You are almost never going to find an operative in Republican or Democratic politics who has not either supported a foreign autocrat, who has been involved in astroturf campaigns for predatory corporations. This is normal. And I'm not saying that the guys knew he was doing this. Because this obviously does conflict with the hashtag resistance nature. Of What's their funny show. is I think it was maybe Favreau or yeah. maybe it was one of the other guys. But before he got to the part where it named who was doing it, he's like, "This is disgusting." No, yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. This is gross. We read the we read the New York Times story about Facebook's lobbying PR campaign to prevent the disclosure of Russia's interference in our election and downplayed the way the platform has been used to spread propaganda and hate speech. We found Facebook's behavior infuriating and reprehensible and said as much on Twitter. We learned from Crooked Media's director, media. we learned that Crooked Media contributor Tim Miller's company, Definer Public Affair, Definer's Public Affairs, did opposition research on groups that were critical of Facebook, and we've asked him for more clarity on what that work was. We disagree with Tim on most policy issues. That's no secret. He worked to defeat Barack Obama in two elections, and we asked him to contribute to Crooked Media because he has interesting things to say about the Republican Party and the Trump era. That said, we need to get to the bottom, the bottom of Tim's involvement in this work, and he won't be contributing more to Crooked in the meantime. Guys, this is the whole problem with that show and the ideology behind it. You should have, at the very least, done due diligence on this guy's client list. And I'm telling you that it is the norm for most media consultants to do sleazy, ethically questionable work for sleazy, ethically questionable companies because that's just how you make a living. There's nothing, there's not a particularly moral component to this. That's what all of them do from both parties. And secondly, when you're focused on the optics and you're focused on finding some Republican who isn't overtly racist, who you can sit back and have a drink with, you're missing the fact that this is part of a broader ideological and commercial infrastructure. And, you know, look, I have a very good friend who's a Republican strategist. I've had him on this show, okay? He's a smart guy and he has worthwhile things to say about the process. But the frame is not, you know... The frame is actually, we really disagree about everything. And you might have some useful information. And it's great to argue and have a roncantor or whatever. But the frame for Tim Miller was that he was like a moral beacon in a party that has no moral beacon. And if Pod Save America doesn't get a deeper, more cynical, more strategic understanding of politics, they are out of it no matter how much more experience and institutional credibility they have. And there's no doubt. Look, if you want to listen to a show that has a better understanding about how like White House workflow works, Pod Save America is better than any other show on the market. But if you want one that is cognizant of what the Republican Party is beyond just having fits about how disgusting Trump is, well, you should probably listen to shows that don't credulously hire sleazy Republican oppo strategists because they're civilized enough to think that you shouldn't say you can grab women by the pussy. It's fucking embarrassing. 
one other part that's not quite related to Tim yeah. Miller, but uh, on the Facebook thing, I want to read this. Uh, Mr. Kaplan. Oh, this is from uh, the the main article. This is the guy who this is the sitting, Republican that who's they sitting had. behind Kavanaugh right. at the hearing. And this is the guy that they hired to be the Republican in charge of their public affairs in D.C. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kaplan argued that Mr. Trump was an important public figure and that shutting down his account or removing this statement could be seen as obstructing free speech said three employees who knew of the discussion. He said it could also stoke a conservative backlash. Don't poke the bear, Mr. Kaplan warned. I don't give a fuck about conservative backlashes. Yeah, right? And it's you. very clear that they like having that excuse, right? It's not. It's never, let's worry about left-wing backlash. They only care about backlash so much as it, uh, it, it, uh, it helps their power grabs, right? Period. Like, and and it's very convenient for it to have. This is how this is how corporations and tech and capitalists in general use the right wing to get what they want. Precisely. And you know, look, and and Mark and you know, and Zuckerberg, honestly, like if you want anybody with an even remotely sympathetic read in this book, it's him and this article. And the truth is, is it just reinforces that you know what? A 34-year-old with no civic, political, or historical awareness should not be in an environment that's so deregulated that he runs these decisions because he doesn't know anything. Like in the way they're in the way the article is written, Sandberg comes off as someone who really understands Washington. She understands the process and she's totally cynical and totally self-interested and has no ethical concerns. And if that makes, you know, that should be obvious to anybody following any of this. And Zuckerberg comes off as you know, indulging in some fantasy about going on a listening tour. And to the extent he checks in, you know, he's super bummed because he's like pro immigration reform, but thinks that there's going to be some silly tech fixes to this. And of course, like Sandberg and like all the rest of them, doesn't want any accountability or oversight, period. So, I mean, if there was one modern message, it would be hashtag abolish, hashtag nationalize Amazon, hashtag abolish Facebook. And, you know, and while we're at it, too, another another snippet that came out of the story, and I, I know less about this than, you know, Jamie is an example, but I've not read a single person who works on these issues and cares about the rights of sex workers and is concerned about that area of human rights that didn't say that Sesta and Foster were incredibly detrimental. And while there might be a moral panic in Congress and it's always easy to vote, you know, for legislation that takes aim at human trafficking, that in fact, that bill would make it far more dangerous for sex workers. Most tech companies oppose SESTA. And I'm sure, of course, they didn't oppose it because they had any moral concerns. They opposed it because it would be onerous. But the one play that Facebook made early on to try to curry favor with Democrats was coming out in favor of SESTA. Just sort of massive cynicism on all levels. Just disgusting.